Hey everyone, welcome to another Master Pairings. Today I have Aaron Holzer, uh, brother of our own John Holzer from New Brew Thursday. And uh, how long have you been into craft beer now? Well, about eight months to a year. Perfect, I love that, I love that. Um, today we're gonna do a kind of a unique American style. It's a amber lager. A lot of craft beer drinkers, when they first start out, are used to amber ales, mm -hmm. which are very common. They're either called red ales or amber ales. Um, when the craft brewing revolution started uh, back in the, well, late 70s, but then got underway in the 80s, um, ales were the beers of choice uh, for breweries because they could turn them over quicker. They didn't have to wait in a lagering tank for a period of time before they can serve them. And so all these little micro, or what are now called craft breweries, started out with ales. And ales that they had to select from were primarily from England because that was the uh, predominant style that was easily accessible to most American uh, home brewers and then craft brewers. So they had things like porter, stout, pale ale, uh, amber ale, things like that. But an amber lager is a nice rich multi lager, kind of along the lines of uh, even if you think about German Marisons or Oktoberfest beers. And uh, it's nice, it's a five and a half percent range right in there. Uh, small IBUs, nice malt background. So I think it'll be really interesting to have. Now this particular one is Old Scratch from Flying Dog Brewery out of Frederick, Maryland. Uh, they do uh, some really creative beers. Hunter S. Thompson kind of adopted them uh, from Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas fame, that Hunter S. Thompson. And uh, Ralph Steadman, who's a great, great artist, does all their labeling. So that's really cool. So they have some pretty mm. cool label designs on there, as you can see. A lot of crazy different things. Uh, matter of fact, the New Brew Thursday crew, your brother and Steven, went out there, uh, as a matter of fact, and interviewed Matt Brophy. Um, yeah, that episode, I don't think they had a master pairing on. I don't know why. So I think they talked too much. So that was a little disappointing. <laughs> but other than that, it was a great show. So something to check out. Um, so anyways, let's go ahead and open these and try them and see what you think. All right. Here you go, sir. Thank you. Perfect. Cheers. Cheers. Kind of a subdued nose, not too much going on. Nice little cream head. Just nice. Um, it's kind of like a pale ale, but it's not an ale. It's a lager. Kind of has that nice malt background. Not really any hops to speak of. Just very minimal, minimal, but just re really nice roasted malt characteristics. So today I thought I'd pair it with some uh, an old American standby, which is uh, fried chicken. <laughs> so go ahead and grab a piece. Help yourself. I'm just going to grab a piece, dig in. What do you think of that? Still tastes the sweetness from the beer, mm -hmm. but it doesn't, from other stuff I've mixed, you know, coming right. from drinking conventional, right? won't name the name beer, but it actually goes pretty good with it compared to Right. Well, mainstream. what's cool about it is um, this has a nice crust. The kernel has nothing on me, but um, this is, um, <laughs> Nice crispiness, good spice. You get, you get the different herbs and spices that come in the batter. And uh, the chicken meat plays really well. It's a very mild flavor along with this. This actually balances with it very nicely and it actually adds something to it. It allows you to have the flavor components of that come out plus the malty and sweetness of this come out. Whereas the other ones are just like drinking water. Yeah. So that's why this is a little more enjoyable, but I really uh, like that. So I have a couple great cheeses for us to try too. I have a um, Swiss Gruyere. These are also very mild cheeses. Mm, something good. like, this is something you'd put like in a macaroni and cheese if you were making your own macaroni and cheese. That really brings out the roastiness, the uh, malt characteristic, everything in the, in the pairing. I just keep tasting the sweetness from yeah. it. The That's sweetness? what I really feel out of it. Right. I mean, you know, like I said, it's, it's not like a conventional one where, right. like you said, it's just water. Right. Well, the good thing about this beer is it plays into the sweetness. This has a little nettiness and sweetness, and so they complement each other. Sometimes when you're doing pairings, you do contrast. Mm 
versus mm -hmm. comparison, where you do two opposite flavors. This beer is just accentuating these uh, two foods because they're, it's a fairly mild beer, and so it um, plays really well with this, the different flavor profiles. This other one's a nice little aged Gouda. It's gonna have a little more flavor to it, but it's still gonna be quite nice. subtle. And once again, you're gonna get sweetness in the roasted malt. Mm. I pick up some nuttiness too with this. A lot of tang with that one. Oh yeah, I see what you're saying, the tang. Yeah, I'm getting actually a little bitterness because this is actually a slightly sweeter cheese. Mm -hmm. So, where this cheese was kind of accenting the sweetness, this one's kind of giving a little more bitter taste when you drink it with mm -hmm. it. It's playing up a little bit of the, the minimal floral notes. I think this has like 19 IBUs or something bittering units, which is very low for an American craft beer, but not for a craft lager. Mm -hmm. And so I think it's playing really well together. And uh, it just goes to show you how different foods can play off different notes of the beer, mm -hmm. which is kind of interesting. So what do you think? Pretty good. All right, yeah. cool. You like the beer for sure. Definitely. All right, well, <laughs> cheers. Thanks for coming to another Master Pairing, guys. Boom.